Vflutter is a piece of malware that I constantly see coming up on my feeds. It's written in C++ and I have no idea what it does. Let's find out. We begin the analysis by having both our IDA decompiler open with the Vflutter malware and x 2 debug with it open as well. I'm using the RetSync plugin to sync both my decompiler and my debugger so that when I step through in x 2 debug, I'll also see the IDA decompilation synced as well. So let's begin by stepping over into this second function here. Now that we've stepped into the second function, we can see in the IDA decompilation that it begins with a while loop that is going to be looping on parameter one. So it'll be looping infinitely. It then will call this function here and put the result variable. If there is a result, then the malware will break out of the loop and call another function a hundred times. If there is no result, then this function will sleep for a hundred seconds and then try again until it gets a result. It seems as though this is the function that we're interested in. So let's take a look inside it. Inside this function, we see a function call that we can inspect within IDA. It seems to be opening a connection, connecting to it, sending a request and receiving a response, and then taking that response and reading the data and returning it. So we can surmise that this function is requesting a URL and then getting the response. So I'll annotate it with that. Then once it's got a response, it'll compare it. If there is no response, then the loop will continue. But if it does have a loop, then the function will continue and it'll check if a string is within the response. Checking the string, we see that it's a bunch of close brackets and it'll do this a few more times. Um, this is also close brackets string and this one is a paragraph HTML tag. After that, it does a bit more handling with the string, but let's see what it's actually requesting. So we're gonna step through this function and see what it's gonna request. We can see that in our debugger, some strings have appeared on the stack, that being twitter.com and pedora6. This seems to be a Twitter profile link. So instead of going through and letting the malware touch out to that, I'm just going to browse to see what it's maybe trying to get. Browsing to that Twitter profile, we can see some interesting things such as a weird looking string. We can see the close brackets at the start here, which we previously saw in the code. And then what looks like a base 64 encoded string and we know this because of the equal signs at the end, which is common padding for base64 strings. So let's take this base64 encoded string and see what it may contain. Using a very useful tool called Cyberchef, we take the base64 encoded string and use the from base64 recipe to return it into readable text. It seems as though the base64 encoded string was this URL here. I'm going to take it in my VM and browse to it. We can see that the web page isn't alive anymore. And from my previous previous research about this malware, it hasn't been alive for quite a while because the website is not available. It's going to make our analysis of the malware much more difficult when trying to run it. So now I'm going to change over to static analysis and try to annotate the functions in IDA. So let's go ahead and do that. We can see for this first function, it's a create thread. So I'm just going to call this create thread wrapper. The next function is a virtual alloc. So I'm again going to do the same. Looking through this, we know that the malware will make use of base64 encoding. So for the time being, this seems as if it may be a base64 decoding routine. So I'm going to call it such. The next function, I have no idea what it does. So I'm going to move on and we'll annotate these two functions here and come back to it so that it's easier to read. This function seems to be checking if a URL is alive. So I'm going to name it as such. This function we touched on earlier in the video and it will request a site and return the response. So I finished up annotating a lot of the functions. We can see some interesting functions such as reading a file, uh, the previously mentioned getting the URL from Twitter, uh, checking if URLs are alive and the base64 decryption and so on. But this is the other main function of the malware. I've called it virus total request because after initial triage of this function, it looks as if it's requesting out to virus total, which we can see in this HTTP get response. So let's look at what this function is doing. So it'll get a module file name and then it'll read the file. Then in a while loop, which won't end unless it's broken out of, it'll get a tick count. This is being used for a random string and will be put in what looks like a HTTP post body 
which we can see here, it's making use of wsprintf to insert that tick count within this body. And inside of that, it's putting in this headers, which it gets from another function. Then if create stream on H global returns true, then it'll break out of this while loop. But if, if not, it'll continue to go through the code. It'll call this sub function. What I imagine all of this code is doing after triaging is that it's creating a file in memory that it's going to use to post to virus total. And we can look at the HTTP get response function and we can see that it first requests the URL of virustotal.com. It'll also do a post to that URL and it's using the virustotal API here to post a file to the scan API, which is basically just like uploading a file to virustotal for a scan. We can also see that it's using a fake user agent. This is probably to try and combat anti-botting from virustotal. And so we can surmise that this call here is basically going to upload a file to VirusTotal multiple times. This call to VirusTotal is being done within a thread which will constantly loop. So let's find out what file it's uploading and what that has to do with the site that was gotten from Twitter. There is only one call to the create file wrapper. So I'm going to look at it and it's being used here. I believe what's happening is that the malware is creating a file and allocating a bunch of different bytes to it. So after even more analysis of this, I have come to the conclusion that what it is doing is it is requesting Twitter, getting the URL from Twitter and then downloading the response from that worm.in site that we saw earlier, which is dead now. It'll then download that file and write it to a file. And then it'll create a post request to VirusTotal and non-stop upload this file to attempt and and flood VirusTotal. I do not know when this malware was made, but this isn't going to work because VirusTotal is not a small site that can succumb to a DDoS like this but if we look through the malware and check the strings we can also find the api key that it's using and the file name that it's sending of 1.exe. So to conclude, VirusTotal can just block the API key that's embedded in this malware. And also if the hash of the file that's being uploaded isn't being changed, they can also block that too. After looking through the code here, I understand why it's called vFlutter because I imagine that this is short for VirusTotal Flutter. It's interesting to see the use of Twitter as a C2 and attempt to attack a very useful malware analysis site such as virus total i hope you enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching until the end until the next one goodbye